what is the role of radiation in the treatment of brain metastases? This is one of a series of cancer videos on the website aboutcancer.com that explore the role of radiation in treating various types of cancer. Brain metastases are cancers that start elsewhere in the body and spread secondarily to the brain. These are distinct from primary brain tumors such as gliomas. These are common in patients with stage 4 cancer, particularly patients with cancer of the lung, melanoma, or kidney that commonly spread to the brain. The most common source for a brain metastasis will, however, be lung cancer or breast cancer. Generally, the upper part of the brain is affected, the cerebral hemispheres. The symptoms of a brain metastasis include headaches, weakness, mental change, or seizures. Patients can have balance problems. Often the opposite side of the body will have the symptoms, and an MRI will show brain swelling, which may respond well to decadron or dexamethasone. Post-contrast MRIs are the best diagnostic tests. Brain metastases have smooth margins, which makes them ideal targets for radiosurgery. Other things need to be excluded, such as a stroke that may look like a white spot, or a brain abscess or other type of infection. A brain biopsy may, may be necessary. MRIs will show that these are multiple in two-thirds to three-fourths of the cases, particularly lung and melanoma. These are typical pictures showing MRIs of patients with multiple brain metastases. A PET scan is not a useful test because the brain uses sugar, and a PET scan uses radioactive sugar. The PET scan may actually look cold in the area of the brain tumor, not hot. Brain radiation can be whole brain radiation or targeted radiosurgery, such as cyber knife or gamma knife. The best advice on treatment comes from the NCCN's website. The treatment should be multidisciplinary, neurosurgery, chemotherapy, radiation. The patient may benefit from brain surgery or require a brain biopsy, or may be better treated with whole brain radiation or targeted radiosurgery. This is quite complex. Whole brain radiation includes the whole brain with protection of the eyes and the salivary glands. MRIs will show serial regression of the tumor or tumors over a period of weeks to months. This is a patient at eight weeks or two months. This patient has the small lesion gone by six weeks. The larger tumor is still shrinking. This patient at two months and even out to four months is showing regression. This patient with multiple brain meds from small cell, they're all gone by six weeks. Even tumors that are considered radio-resistant, such as rectal cancer or kidney cancer, may respond satisfactorily to whole brain radiation, though these patients are commonly treated with radiosurgery, where a higher dose can be targeted more accurately. This patient had a small lung cancer metastatic to the brain, gone by three or four months. This patient, by 20 days, the lesion was almost gone, and by four months, gone completely. This patient, the treated lesion responded, but she developed a brain mat in an unradiated part of the brain. The doses of radiation are well defined. These are considered safe doses. 80 or 90 percent of the patients will benefit. 50 to 60 percent of the time, the symptoms will go away for a prolonged period. Side effects include hair loss, skin irritation, short-term fatigue, headaches, or hearing problems. There's some concern about whole brain radiation affecting memory. MRs may show leukoencephalopathy or white matter changes that develop over a period of months. This is due to whole brain and this doesn't occur in radiosurgery. Many patients then prefer radiosurgery because of the more targeted radiation. There's a higher local control rate. There's some risk of local radiation brain damage called radionecrosis. This generally will respond on its own as this patient in the left frontal lobe. It healed up in a period of months. The best survival is related to the patient's age, performance score, and the status of cancer elsewhere in the body. The RTOG has classes that show median survival. Again, these are only averages and should not be applied to an individual. Patients in class 1 are more likely to benefit from aggressive therapy such as surgery or radiosurgery. All the details can be found on the website aboutcancer.com. And again, the best advice on treatment is found on the website 
of the NCCN.org.